from beautiful Colonial Village Lanes. This is the 1989 Akron Open. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Mitchell and I'll be doing your play-by-play -play for this, the 10th renewal of this most prestigious event. 96 players started the tournament and tonight we're going to see the top five of the area's best players vying for the title of the Akron Open and a check for $1,700. And with me, I have two special color commentators. With me first is a two-time Stark County Masters champion and an Ohio State champion, Dickie Barger. Well, thanks very much, Jim. And once again, it's a pleasure to be back here at beautiful Colonial Lanes. And what a high-scoring tournament we've had this, this weekend. Unbelievable scores, taking an average of over 230 just to make the television show. So we're looking for some big scores tonight. Thanks you, Dickie. And also we have a special color commentator tonight. He won the inaugural Akron Open back in 1980. is now a full-time touring professional, Ronnie Bell. Ron? Thanks, Jim. I tell you, it's, it's going to be an exciting event, and uh, I look forward to some high scores like Dickie says, but I think look for this left lane to give these guys a little bit of a problem. Okay, you heard it from all the champions. Now let's meet the starting five. And thanks very much, Jim. And uh, with me is the fifth place qualifier, Gary Rebelo. And Gary, you got a tough field to go after tonight. Yeah, the tough field. And uh, if I make good shots, I think I can win tonight. Well, he's got to go through four of the best bowlers in the area. And we've had high scoring all week. So look for some big things out of this rather short guy. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with the fourth place qualifier, Tom Johns. Tom, you were here last year. This is your second year in a row. Do you think the experience will help you? Well, I think the experience is going to help me, Ronnie, but it's a tough field to go through. These are all talented players. True story right there, bowling fans. Thanks very much, Ron. And uh, with me, I've got the third place qualifier, Kerry Barbera. And Kerry, you're defending, not the defending champion, but you've won here before. Uh, what are your chances this year? Well, I, I like your shot, and uh, I think I'll have a good shot at maybe making it here again. Well, this guy's won here before he's proved himself, so I think it, uh, he's got a real good opportunity. Back to you, Jim. 1981, Tim Malsass won the Akron Open uh, eight years later. He was 19 years old at the time, Tim, right? What do you think your chances are of winning this year's tournament? Well, I feel pretty confident right now, although I do have to go through two great players. I mean, Ken Conzo's averaged 246. He's going to be tough to beat if I make it to the championship round. Fancy averaged 240 for this tournament. He's a uh, good chance of winning it again. With me, ladies and gentlemen, is the tournament leader, Kenny Conzos. Kenny, you led the tournament all weekend. Now it's just one game for the title. How do you feel you're going to do tonight? Well, I feel I should do pretty good. I just got to stay loose and throw clean shots. Hopefully that gets a few strikes. Well, we wish you the very best, Kenny. One game, ladies and gentlemen, for $1,700 in the most prestigious tournament in the Akron area. Okay, with me is the general manager of Colonial Village Lanes and the tournament director and founder, Rick Davis. Rick, another fine tournament. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, it's always a pleasure to run the Akron Open. This being the 10th one, I'm really happy with the way it's come and progressed after all these years. I'm looking for a fine show. You know, if the uh, qualifying round is any indication as to the excitement that you're going to see tonight, ought to be a really an exciting evening. I think we're going to see high scores. I can't predict a winner, but I know they're going to be bowling well. Okay, we've met the starting five. Now let's get right to the action. Gary Revelo now working on three in a row, coming up in frame number six. Got to have this strike just to maintain the tie. Gary Revelo averaged 231 for this tournament. That's for 18 games. Unbelievable statistics. The pitch. Unbelievable pitch. Well, I mean, Jimmy, he just, you know, he made that adjustment after those two soft tens, the first two frames. He went right at him. Uh, Rebelo is a true veteran and a word of veteran, uh, bowling on a tour over 20 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, you know, at a young man, he was, it was a star. So uh, I, look, uh, I look for this to be a very, very close match, as you can see it is. Gary Rebelo coming up in frame number seven, working on four in a row. Gary Rebelo had one of three 300s that were bowled this week in the Akron Open. Make it number five. Boy, what a great shot there. He's taking a lead, and he's putting the uh, the pressure back on Tom. Uh, but we expected this. We expected high scores, close games, and it's great for the fans. You know, two years ago, we started out our telecast with uh, a 279 tie, gentlemen. Looks like we are uh, just about ready to have another one. Following in those footsteps, Jimmy, Tommy Johns on lane 22. Way back. Tommy Johns. 
Got to have the strike to maintain his tie, and there it is. He's got that ball working. Tommy Johns is, uh, doesn't have a lot of tournament titles to his credit, but like we did say, he, this is his second year in a row that he's made the top five in the Akron Open. He was on the winning team of the Budweiser League of Masters in the inaugural year three years ago. He has three 300s to his credit and a one series of 800 or better. That was a series of 810. Coming up in frame number eight, the 33-year-old from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, Tommy Johns. A little light that time. Well, he just didn't make a good shot, and that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier, Jimmy, about him waiting on the swing. He got a little fast with the feet that time, and with his speed, if he gets the ball going to the right, you know, it's just not going to get back. And as you saw, that ball slid by the head pin, and he left a difficult 2 4 8, a double wood spare. It's also a difficult spare, plus the fact that he's uh, lost three pins in count, so that gives Gary Rebelo just a few more pins to play with. Going for the conversion. Tommy Johns to 248. Easily made. That's a big spare for him, Jim. Uh, it, it still keeps him a little bit down in account, but he's right in this match. Right now, Gary Rubolo coming up in frame number eight here in the 1989 Akron Open. He's got a five strikes in a row. This will uh, give him a 12 10 lead right now, taking a little extra time. Watch this nice, smooth style of Gary Rubolo from Canton, Ohio. Nice pendulum arm swing. Looks real good. Wow. Unbelievable. He saw the five and a half that time. Unbelievable the way these players are performing. And just the, the great scores that we had all day and yesterday. Uh, just tremendous scoring here at Colonial Lanes. And uh, uh, a lot has to be said for the job that the staff of Rick Davis has, has done here. Uh, and you can, get, you can tell from the results that they're getting from the scores. Gary Rivolo bowling in the ninth frame. Got six in a row, going for number seven, the all-important ninth frame. Looks good, a little light, he gets the action off the wall, but at that time he just didn't carry out to seven. Well, he, he got it a little bit, like you said, to the right a little bit, and uh, he didn't have the real good roll on it, but he threw that big bagger in the middle there, and he's put a lot of pressure on Tommy Johns, but that's what Tommy Johns has been doing all weekend, is responding to the pressure, so uh, this match is not over yet. Gary Rebelo to convert the seven pin. Does it well in the ninth frame. Right now, gentlemen, with the situation is that Gary Ribolo has gone off at a 248 pace. Tommy Johns can, can shoot uh, 256. So uh, anything can happen right now. So, but Tommy Johns is in a uh, like a must strike situation already. Bowling on lane lane 22 here in the Akron Open. Tommy Johns looks good. All right, Ronnie. That sets up some interesting uh, possibilities. Absolutely, Jim. The way it looks right now, um, uh, Gary Revelo can strike out. He really locks out Tommy Johns, but there's nothing worse than seeing a guy striking ahead of you. Tommy Johns right now, he's going to have to strike out to put the pressure on Gary Revelo and force him to strike out. The situation here, we come up in the 10th frame, the game number one here in the Akron Open. Tommy Johns is 196 through the 8th frame with the strike working in the 9th. The possibility of 256. Gary Revelo can get a possibility of 258. Tenth frame, week ten. Not a good shot for Tommy. I mean, he, and don't get me wrong. I mean, he just didn't get the good lift on it. He knew it when he threw it. it you could tell a little disgust in his uh, as he walked back. Uh, he left the flat ten. Uh, he's got to make this. Tommy Johns uh, qualified in the sixth position after the 12-game qualifier and moved into that number four spot for a telecast. Average 232 for the 18-game tournament as he converts his spare in the 10th frame, which gives him 216 through the 9th frame with the spare working, possibility of 236. Like we said, he uh, averaged 232 for the 18-game tournament. Uh, right now, gentlemen, uh, the winner of this match will go on to meet Kerry Barbera, but uh, the loser of the match will receive $500. Going for the fill ball. That was a good shot, Jim. Uh, we, believe it or not, we still get the possibility of a tie. If Gary Revelation should happen to throw an, uh, an eight-count split and just get one, we've got the tie ball game just like we had last year uh, you know, on the first match. So anything can still happen, uh, especially you lounge fans out there. Don't be, don't be afraid to uh, uh, Gary, take it over. Gary Revelo come up in uh, frame number 10 here in the first game of the 
1989 Akron Open. He needs a, any kind of a mark if he strikes on this ball. He is a winner. And it looks real good. Looks real good. And there's your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Coming in a little light. Uh, the best he can shoot is 258, but it's irrelevant. He will win this match. He will go on to meet Kerry Barbera. Tommy Johns will finish in the number five position. Gary, uh, Tommy will pick up a check for $500. So, again, for the second year in a row, Tommy Johns finishes in that fifth position as we watch Gary Revelo throw his second strike here in the tenth frame of the 1989 Akron Open. For the field ball here, he will shoot 258, which is uh, about 20 pins over his tournament average. Well, as we predicted, Jimmy, high scores and uh, Gary Revelo finishes him off. 250. We jinxed him a little there. 255. 255. Gary Revelo, the winner of the first game. He defeats Tommy Johns, who sh shot a fine 235. Uh, so now we're waiting for Gary Barbera to come up, and he's going to take his practice. So we're going to be back with the next game right after this. Uh, Gary's got some nice stats on his uh, bio sheet here. 12 games of 300 or better and six series of 800 or better with a high of 844. As we said, Kerry is the 1986 Akron Open champion, so he's been down this road a little bit. Bowling in the first frame lane 22 here at the Colonial Village lanes. Going to convert the 1, 2, 8. He's got to cross over a little bit, and he makes the conversion with no problem. Tough opening spare, uh, Jimmy, because, uh, you know, he's starting off, he's a little bit nervous, uh, and he gets a spare like that, he converted very nicely, it was, fortunately, it was a strike spare, whereas he can throw his normal shot and, uh, uh, into the pocket and, and still pick it up. Yes, Gary Barbera gets to bowl in the second frame here in the second match. As we talked about, Teresa Morris uh, finishing the sixth position. She picked up a check for $400. Mm -hmm. Billy Gom, uh, the veteran Hall of Famer, finishing the seventh position. He got a check for 345 as Kerry Barbera delivers his second shot in frame number two. And that was a great pitch for a strike. He got a little more on that one. I think that first shot, uh, you know, there's a first shot. Jitters a little bit. Uh, he's been here before, you know. Uh, but winning before doesn't mean anything uh, when it comes down to this part of the action is we both uh, all three know uh, you know every time you get back get to it uh, it's a different situation as we watch Gary Rebelo on lane 22. Gary Rebelo on the second frame got a strike up in the first frame he's going to try to apply the pressure early right down around the seventh board to Ronnie seems like he's playing a little more outside than he did in the qualifying round. He's throwing the ball real direct, keeping it in play, and that's what you have to do, especially in the pressure situations. He's making good shots, and, he, and he's doing the same thing uh, against, uh, against Kerry that he did against Tom John's last game. He's immediately putting the pressure on him, and uh, Kerry's going to have to respond. Gary Revelo is probably one of the more accurate players that you're ever going to see. He's got a nice, smooth style. He's extremely accurate. Nice smooth delivery. You can, uh, with that delivery, you'll be in the game a long, long time. As he carries out the 10 pin, that gives him the uh, three strikes. Freeze perfect through three. You know, sometimes, Jim, uh, that you'll leave that uh, soft 10, but that's just about the way things are going for Gary Rebelo right now because he's got the smooth stroke. He's got the nice, clean release. Watch him at the bottom of the swing, how he just lets it go. He's just making good shots right now, and then you start to trip the 10s, and you start to get the four out. And, uh, this should be, uh, Kerry needs to make a big shot here. Kerry Barbera bowling in the third frame on lane 22, the 1986 Wayne County Masters champion going for two in a row, and he converts it. He's got a spare in the first, strike in the second, strike in the third, but he is down 10 pins to Gary Revelo, who is perfect through three. Gary Revelo is, uh, like we say, is perfect through three as Kerry Barbera comes up on the left lane. We're bowling on lanes 21 and 22 here in the Akron Open at Colonial Village Lanes. I'm Jim Mitchell. I'll be doing your play-by-play -play throughout the evening. And with me is Dickie Barger and Ronnie Bell as uh, Kerry Barbera comes up in the fourth frame. He's got two strikes in a row. It's early in the match, but we're in a uh, must-strike situation already. It seems like that it's going to be like that throughout the whole evening. Didn't quite get the five out, Dick. Didn't get the good roll. Uh, Kerry still looks uh, a little tight, but and I, 
He's just not putting a good put, putting a good swing on it, and that's what I mentioned about Revelo. And like Revelo's got a game under his belt already too. So Kerry's kind of going frame at a time, you know. And Reb is already with a 250 under his belt, so he's he's applying the pressure, and it's it's definitely making uh, an effect on Kerry Barbera's release. Kerry Barbera, bully in the fourth frame, converts that five pin, gives him 69. Do the third frame with the spare working in the fourth, but his opponent. 42-year-old Gary Rebelow from Canton, Ohio, is perfect through three. Bowling on the right lane, on lane 22 here in the Akron Open. Gary's got to keep the pressure on. That's a big shot right here, folks. This is a real big shot. Looking real smooth that time, Dick. Got it in a little bit, huh, Ron? Well, you notice, Dick, if, if anything, he just did not get the good hit on that ball. It looked like he got out of that, that ball a little bit quick, uh, and the ball went out, and he did, just didn't have the uh, the proper spin on the ball to carry that 10 pin. He's going to have to pick this up. He will move to the extreme left side of the lane to convert the 10 pin, and he'll just slide it in. He won't put a hole out on the ball, just slide it right into the 10. Very accurate player. And he converts the 10 pin in the fourth frame. That gives him 79 in the third with the spare in the fourth. Gary Barbera's got 69 in the third and a spare in the fourth. Gary Barbera is down 10 pins. Uh, we are playing for a purse tonight, gentlemen, of $4,600 with the winner to reach 1700 uh, The two bowlers that we are seeing now are playing for 1400 The loser will receive six, and the winner will keep going on as Gary Rubolo coming up in frame number five. And he strikes. He did just what Ron said. He got more on that. It was a much better delivery, and that's why I said the shot before was a key shot. You got to keep the pressure on Kerry Barbera and a player like that, don't you think, Ron? I mean, he's a great player. Well, all these guys, you don't make a, a, an Akron Open TV show without being a great player, and, and they're demonstrating that right now. Kerry's going to have to to begin to put some more pressure, though, uh, back on Gary right now. He's going to have to start. Kerry Barbera on lane 22, the right lane here on our TV pair of the Akron Open. Taking a little more time, uh, he is currently down 10 pins. Bowling in frame number five. Let it go to the right quite a bit, but it made it back, guys. He got a good roll on that one. That was a lot cleaner shot. He, actually, I thought he got it in a little bit and then out. Uh, and from our camo angle here, uh, back here, it's uh, a little hard to see sometimes, but uh, he had to do that, like Ron said. He had to, he's got to put the pressure right back on Rebelo because you don't want to get uh, more than uh, 10 pins behind Gary Rebelo. Gary Barbera seems to be quite calm out there right now. Bowling in frame number six, working on a strike. He's got 89 in the fourth, a strike working. Gary Rebelo, his opponent, has got 99 in the fourth with a strike working. And again, we have a very close, tight, high-scoring match. Gary Barbera, lane 21. Well, you can tell from his reaction, Ronnie, he liked that when he let it go. It's the best ball he's thrown so far. You notice in the first few frames, uh, he's become a little bit lighter in the pocket, not really extending, not really hitting the ball. That's the, sh that's the shot that uh, Kerry Barbera is, is famous for right there. He threw it good, he, he came through it real hard, and uh, the results were uh, a strike. Gary Ribolo on the lane 22. Gary Ribolo had a 300 game here this week in the Akron Open. Looking real good. Little week 10 that time. Uh, you know, we were talking to Gary before the show, and we asked him what was the turning point for him here in this year's Akron Open, and I crossed next to him, and he shot a, a three-game block in there, 233, 267, and a 300. Gentlemen, that uh, adds up to an 800 series. Oh, that'll when you grab 200 pins during a qualifier, that'll definitely put a little poke in your uh, in your arm swing. And it, and like Gary said, us had vaulted them into the into the into the top uh, 16, and uh, then he just stayed there. Being a veteran player that he is, uh, you know, once he, you you give a guy like that an 800 series in a six game block, and he's going to take full advantage of it. Gary Reblo coming up in frame number seven. He's got a spare working in the sixth frame right now, gentlemen. We have a tie ball game. Gary Barbera's got two strikes working. Gary Rubolo is working on a spare. Bowling in lane seven. Good pitch. Yeah, he rolled out a lot better, huh, Ronnie? He sure did. You know, I noticed he's having a, 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 a good time on lane 21, but 22 of this game is giving Gary a little bit of trouble. I think he's going to have to make a, a slight adjustment, maybe move his feet a little bit to the right and play a little bit more direct. Hopefully he'll do it soon. Gary Barbera coming up in uh, frame number seven. He's got a double up working. He's got 89 in the fourth and two strikes working. He can uh, take a 10-pin lead with the strike right here. 
Gary Barbera qualified in the fourth position after our 12 games, and he uh, moved into the third spot after the six games in the semifinals. So, a blistering 234 average for the 18 game tournament. There it is, three in a row, and he just takes the lead. He does have the lead, and uh, 20 year, 28 year old Kerry Barbera, a former champion here, has now taken the lead from Gary Rebelo. And as we predicted, high scores. Look at the numbers, Jim. You know, we talked to Kerry earlier in the match or in the uh, interviews, and you know he says that he can strike on this condition. He can strike here at Colonial Village Lane, and if he has any problem, it's with spare shooting. And uh, right now, he doesn't have that problem. I mean, when you're throwing strikes, you don't have to shoot the spares, but that's something to think about later on in the match, just in case it comes down to that point where he might need a spare. Kerry Bear uh, Barbera bowling on lane 21 in frame number eight, working on three in a row, going for four. I like it. He liked that one. Well, we've seen a real turnabout here in events, haven't we? Well, uh, definitely we sure have, Dick. Uh, uh, he's got a 20-pin lead right now all of a sudden, but uh, Gary can respond. Uh, I look for this guy to throw the next two. Uh, he's that kind of a player. He'll definitely hit the pocket for sure. Uh, we'll see what he does. This is the key shot, this right now. Gary Ribolo bowling in frame number eight. He's got a strike working. But he's down. It's a uh, again a much situation where he must strike right here. And he got that week ten out that time, Dickey. Uh, the situation is very simple. Gary Revelo is going off right now at a 2:29 pace. Kerry Barbera is going off at a 2:39 pace. So really, anything can happen. <laughs> it's it's going to be a nail biter. I get the feeling. I think he secretly heard me there, Dick. He made the proper move. He got that tin bit out. He, with did. The he did. He did. He made the move. He made the move. Gary Rebelo on lane 21, bowling in the eighth frame, working on two in a row. Nice smooth delivery. And he did. He struck again. Well, he's got 14 years on Kerry Barbera in, uh, in age, and uh, that's all bowling experience, too. Uh, bowling fans, uh, Gary Rebelo bowling uh, on the tour in the late 60s. And Gary, uh, you know, this is all in the saying this, and we quite honestly, glad, glad, glad to see him still around. <laughs> As we have uh, Gary, uh, Kerry Barbera coming up in the ninth frame. This is our second game at the 1989 Akron Open from Colonial Village Lanes. I'm Jim Mitchell, and with me is Dickie Barger and Ronnie Bell doing our professional color today as Kerry is working on four in a row, bowling in the ninth frame to apply the pressure to Gary Revelo. Little high, left to four. Boy, have we got a match now, Jim. Uh, I think there's a one pin game right now. Kerry's down. Uh, uh, Gary Rebel, though, if he strikes out, uh, Kerry can't beat him. But again, Kerry's got to pick up this spare, regain his thoughts, come back, strike out, put the pressure back on Gary. We're in the ninth frame, and uh, the four pin, Dickie's not that easy to spare. We have uh, quite a bit of oil carry down here. Yeah, but he's going to throw, he's going to go real hard and direct at it, and he is not going to miss a spare, I guarantee you. Kerry Barbera goaling it for the four pin, the ninth frame, and he makes the conversion. And uh, the situation, the situation is very plain right now. We've got a one pin match. Uh, Kerry Barbera going off at a 238 pace. And, uh, you know, anything can happen here in the 10th. Let's don't forget the possibility of a tie. Uh, it can definitely happen. Kerry goes strike spare. Uh, and Gary goes uh, spare strike. Nine spare strike. We've got a tie. I think with you here, Ron, there's always a possibility of a tie. The winner of this match will go on to bowl the number two seeded player, the 1981 champion, Timmy Elsass. The winner, or the loser, will pick up a check for $600. But here we go, the 10th frame, Kerry Barbera. Lane 21. Wow. Gosh, you threw that good, Jimmy. A solid 10. Uh, boy, the bowling guys were not with him on that pitch. That's for sure, uh, Dickie. Uh, and, the, and the key here again is now... Uh, uh, Gary Rebelo has two pins to work with. Uh, he's going to have to pick this up and throw a strike. Anything can happen. Well, this is with that spare shooting. Uh, now, this is a 10 pin, a little more difficult. And uh, Jim mentioned earlier about Gary and uh, having any admitted himself having some trouble shooting spares. So let's see him shoot this 10 pin. On Going for it in the 10th frame, and it's exactly what we talked about earlier, gentlemen. If anything was the downfall of Kerry Barbera, it was those one pin spares, and especially on the corners. Uh, he threw a lot of strikes throughout the tournament. But Kerry finishes finishes up with a 226. Uh, the situation is right now is uh, uh, Gary Rebelo. All he needs is a mark. If there's anybody that can sympathize with Kerry Barbera, it's me. I missed the 10th pin against Jeff Moraz in the uh, 
1983 you opened to lose the title. So uh, it's just a tough break. Uh, of course, Gary got a strike there. Uh, he's en route to another 250 game. Uh, it's just a tough break for Gary. He's going to have to uh, bite the bullet, so to say, uh, so to speak, and, and come back next year and go for another title. Well, he made you know he made two great shots. He made a great shot in the ninth. He grabbed it, got all of it, left a solid four. Comes right back on the on lane 21 and leaves us the ring in 10. So. You know, it, sometimes it's going with you and sometimes it's not. And as we mentioned uh, earlier in the broadcast, uh, Gary Rebelo with his style and with his smooth delivery, as you said, Jimmy, so many times, uh, you know, he's a, he's a tough player to beat and uh, he kept the pressure on. Well, Gary Barbera, the 1986 Akron Open champion, will not win his second title here today. He loses to Gary Rebelo, who is currently averaging 255 in his two games tonight here on the show. Gary Barbera shoots 226. He will finish in the fourth position. He will pick up a check for $600. Gary Revelo shoots 259 to go along with his first game of 255. He goes on to meet Tim Elsass, and we'll be back with our next match right after this. Okay, here we go. We're ready to start our third match tonight here in the 1989 Akron Open, the second seeded player and the 1981 champion Tim Elsass. Uh, he's got his hands full against Gary Rebelo, who is currently averaging 257 for his two matches. Timmy Elsass averaged 240 for the tournament this weekend. 18 games in the Akron Open. First frame. Looks good. Yeah, great shot by Tim El Elsass as uh, he starts off on the left lane. You know, it's interesting. Uh, the Akron Open, uh, at this point right now, we can say, quite honestly, it's not going to be an Akron champion, is it? That's right, Dick. And, uh, uh, it, well, it, it could be. You know, you never know Tim Elsass. He can, he can come right up here, and uh, he is living in Akron now, if I may be so bold to say. <laughs> I forgot he uh, did re relocate. You're right. Uh, he is now an Akron University student. Hey, Gary Rebelo is starting out his third game here on our show tonight. Again, uh, Gary seems to be quite relaxed starting out with his strike here in the first frame. Uh, you know, Gary looks so calm and relaxed right now, he's going to be awful tough to beat. Well, you know, when you get his age, uh, he's pretty content in his ways. You know, really, Reb's uh, been around a long time. I mean, this guy's a true, true veteran in the word. Rumor has it, though, he's still shopping in the junior section, fan. So uh, <laughs> so don't be afraid to go out there and, uh, and help him out if you see him, uh, see him in the store. Gary Rebelo bowling in frame number two on lane 21 here in the Akron Open. Comes up a little light, leaves that week 10. Didn't get a good reaction. They didn't like the shot when he threw it. Uh, once again, we're getting started here with match number three. Uh, Gary Rebelo, Tim Elsass, Tim Elsass, a former champion here, and pumped up. Let's say during the interviews, uh, Timmy was very, very uh, adamant about what he was going to do tonight. And, uh, as Gary converts the difficult 10 pin and let's watch Tim Elsass on lane 22. Tim Elsass, 27 years of old, 27 years of age, uh, from Akron, Ohio right now. He's formerly from Canton. He now makes his home here in the Akron area. He's, as we say, 27 years of old. He was 19, gentlemen, when he won his first Akron Open title back in 1981 and uh, obviously the last couple of years he's been into a little dry spell but you know he spent a lot of time at the University of Akron he's now graduated and uh, he's back to bowling real well bowling in the second frame two strikes in a row Dick yeah, I didn't realize uh, Timmy was living here in town uh, I haven't been following this closely as I normally do uh, let that get by me so it is nice that we still got an Akron uh, contingent left in the tournament uh, Gary Rebelo, of course, from Canton, and Kenny Konzos uh, pulling out of Brunswick, Ohio. So Tim Elsass uh, has taken the lead here as he moves to lane 21 for the third frame. 27-year-old Timmy Elsass uh, bowling in frame number three. He's bowling on the left lane, lane 21, here at Colonial Village Lanes. He is perfect through two, going for his uh, third strike in a row. Timmy's high game of the tournament was 290. That was during the qualifying round. Average 240 for the 18 games throughout the tournament. And he comes up with strike number three. Uh, the difference in the two games, gentlemen, you notice Gary uh, Rebelo's going a little straighter in the pocket, whereas Timmy sort of opens the shot up. He seems to be crossing more boards to get to the pocket. It's a smoother type shot, though, Jim. It's a, it's a little bit smoother uh, uh, than what Kerry Barbaria was throwing the last game. 
Uh, but this is a classic matchup right here. All of a sudden, it's the shoes on the other foot. Uh, Gary's going to have to come through and put some pressure back on Tim Elsass. Gary Revelo coming up in the third frame with a strike up in the third. He has a strike in the first and a spare in the second. He's got 40 in the second frame as his opponent, Tim Elsass, is perfect through three. Sort of an ironic match that we have here that Tim Elsass is bowling his uh, idol. And uh, Gary Rebelo, he says if he had one person he would love to bowl with, it would be Gary Rebelo. And, and they are, uh, you know, friends throughout the years, uh, you know, 42 years of age. Tim Elsass is 27, and, and they're, they're just great friends. But tonight they're bowling for the Akron Open title. Gary Rebelo now has two strikes in a row. And Tim Elsass coming up in the fourth frame is perfect through three. Let's go through some of the other finalists, gentlemen. We mentioned Teresa Morris finished sixth. Billy Gahn, the veteran, finished in the seventh position. Left-hander and veteran Bobby Fitt finished in the eighth position. And Rocky Heater, last year's qualifying leader, who finished second in Akron Open, finished ninth. Akron University's Mark Bradley finished in the tenth position. Akron University's Mark, uh, Mike Berger finished eleventh. George Kitchen, a veteran, finished in the twelfth position. Nick Profrock finished thirteenth. Akron University's Mark Hurdlick finished fourteenth. John Vincent in the 15th position, and our 16th and final position was Tracy Heine. So we had a tremendous field as Timmy Elsass comes through in the fourth frame. He is perfect through four. That could be a real, real important shot there. Tim Elsass uh, took a little more time on that shot, I think, Ron, and uh, he didn't throw as good a shot. He laid it a little short, but he went through it. He made the good swing, and he got the big break, the trip 4-9. What a big break right there. I mean, if he leaves a 4-9 or just trips the 4 and still leaves a 9, uh, that's a 20-pin difference. And, and now Tim's got to feel very good about it. Now he can throw up and throw a nice, relaxed shot and make a good shot, and uh, he could come away uh, uh, being up 30 pins all of a sudden. Tim Elsass bowling on lane 21 in the fifth frame. He's perfect through four. He's been down this road many times, being perfect. He has 14 games of 300. Going for number five. It's a beautiful shot. He seems to be so relaxed. Tim Elsass has got three series of 800 or better with a high of 845. He is a three, uh, three years. He was the Stark County Rookie of the Year. Also, he's an OTBA doubles title champion with Eddie Carter and an OTBA champion so uh, Timmy has quite a few titles to his credit. At a tender age as he's been he's got experience already as we watch Gary Rebelo. Gary Rebelo bowling on frame number five leaves a ring and solid seven. But the smash seven oh, unbelievable Rebelo dug in deep on that one uh, Jimmy, I mean, you could just see at the bottom, he just went for all of it. He threw a perfect shot, what appeared to be perfect, and the solid seven, a true bowling tap. Huh, Ron? It sure is, and it's just a tough break right now. He's just going to have to gather his thoughts, pick up the spare, just like he did, and, and just try to keep on going. He cannot afford to stop now. Well, there's not much you can do when you uh, throw the ball that nice and leave that solid seven, but uh, it puts him in a very uh, awkward position right now for the first time, Gary Rebelo is behind in a match. Uh, as we say, the first match, he, he beat uh, Tommy Johns with a two game of 255. The second game, he beat Kerry Barbera with 259. But right now, he is down around 20 pins to Tim Elsass, bowling in frame number six. Another week 10. The soft 10. And, uh, well, this match is going the other way all of a sudden for uh, Gary Rebelo, Tim Elsass. Uh, I talked with him earlier today. Uh, you know, he told me it's interesting. Uh, he, he's bowled 300 here at uh, Colonial Lanes three times and over the last uh, uh, seven, eight years here. And uh, each year that he bowled the 300 games, he never made the TV show. Here this year, his high game of the tournament is 290. He now has five in a row, a shot at a 300 game. Tim Elsass coming up in frame number six. He'll be bowling on the right lane, lane number 22 here in the Akron Open. He's perfect through five. I'm Jim Mitchell, and uh, with me is Ron Bell and Dickie Barger, and we're bringing to you the 1989 Akron Open from Colonial Village Lanes, and it's been a wonderful tournament. 96 players, 96 of the best players from a five-county area. Just an unbelievable tournament that Rick Davis, the general manager and founder of the Akron Open, puts on. As we see Timmy Elsass bowling in the sixth frame, taking a little more time. He wants to make sure that he gets off a real good shot here. Perfect through five. Going for number six. He got it to the right. 
little soft on that. Yeah, exactly. He got he got soft. He got it into the uh, hook spot a little bit too quick, huh, Ron? That's right, uh, Dick. And and you know the key here is that he left. He should have left a four nine the, the last time over there. I'm not sure if we made the adjustment, whether we wanted to throw it harder or he just wanted to make a good shot. And, uh, sometimes uh, when you take too long, it can cost you. And uh, I think this was the case in this frame. That's one thing I was going to bring up, Ron. He, uh, you know, he used to take quite a bit of time and, and get a, he would get in trouble a little bit. And in the last year or so, he sped up his game a little bit. He gets up, gets set, and he delivers the ball. That time, he fell right back into that old habit of taking a time. But, you know, you can't really blame him for doing that. He wanted to make sure he got off a perfect shot. Well, let's don't forget he missed those two pins. Uh, Very important. That, that's, Very important. That, that's four pins and count that, that uh, he just gave Gary Revelo back. So this game is far from over, gentlemen. We, we've got a real match right here, and I look for Gary to respond. Timmy Elsass bowling on the left lane, lane number 21, the seventh frame, a ring of 10. And uh, what looked like a blow away is now a 13-pin match. Uh, so now, we, we again, we've got another tight game. Well, as always, uh, Jim, as soon as we think we've got it going one way and we make a little prediction, uh, things bounce the other way. But that's what's so great about the sport of bowling. Uh, uh, you can do it from uh, the age of five all the way till you're 80 years old, and it's always a, uh, always interesting, no matter uh, who you are or what age you are. The great sport of bowling, a competitive sport. Lane 21, going for the 10-pin, 27-year-old Tim Alsace. Ronnie, did he bounce that off his ankle, or what happened? I thought he did, yes. He, he clipped his ankle, and the ball went in the gutter, and uh, what a turnaround. He started with a 5 million, now he goes open, open. All of a sudden, he's only got a two-pin lead. Uh, he's just got to be so flustered. What do you think, Dick? I'm just shocked. Uh, he looks so prepared, uh, and he, you know, we go back to the tripping at 4-9. I think he should have made the adjustment on the right lane, and he didn't do it. Gary Rubolo coming up in frame number 7. Lane 22 here at Colonial Village Lanes. It puts him right back in the ball game. Again, he's coming up with that week 10. Uh, gentlemen, uh, maybe he's playing a little cautious. I don't think so. I, I, he got a little more angle at the pocket that time. It looked like uh, the ball entered just a little too soon, though, and uh, he didn't get, the good, didn't get the good finish. I think uh, also one thing we're overlooking now is that we bowled two games on this TV pair, and now the lanes are probably changing a little bit. Gary's going to have to start making a, a couple more adjustments to get lined up for that championship match. And, and even Tim L says he's going to have to move. The lanes have changed during this game, and it's whoever d uh, makes the best adjustments is going to win. And we'll see how the uh, two opens by Tim L says affects Gary Rubolo. Gary Rubolo coming up in the eighth frame, lane 21. He's got 127 in the sixth, a spare working in the seventh. Tim L says has got 150 through the seventh, so the uh, we only have a three-pin match right now, as Gary, this time, he comes up in the eighth frame with the strike, gets off the ten-pin, and it'll be interesting to see how Tim can regather himself and get back in the ball game. Did you notice the difference in the shot Gary Revelo threw there? Did he let it go? You could just tell from his reaction, his, his gut reaction. He got the good roll on it. Let's watch Tim Elsass. Again, Tim taking his time. He's uh, trying to compose himself after those two disastrous frames in the 6th and 7th. Bowling at frame number 8. That's a better pitch. He seemed to be a little more relaxed on that shot. He definitely he definitely worked quicker that time. He didn't take as much time. He was more aggressive. You know, that's what happens in these situations. You start kind of maybe out guessing yourself, maybe running a little bit. You've been in this so many times. You can tell us a lot better. Just get up there. You should have everything handled before you get up on the line. Where you're going to throw it, what you're going to do. When you get up there, you feel set. You pull the trigger. And uh, I just don't think he did that. He had a little lapse of concentration. But I think he's back on track now. Timmy else has coming up in the ninth frame. He's got a strike working in the eighth. 150 in the seventh. Strike in the eighth coming up in the ninth frame. Trying to apply a little pressure to Gary Rebelo. Good stroke. He got that ball out on the alley. That was probably his best pitch of the ball game, Dick. Very aggressive shot by Tim Alsace and puts the pressure right back on Gary Rebelo. And we, like Ron has said, uh, we've got another chance for a tie. It's incredible, but uh, yes, we do. Uh, this is the key shot, though, I, I think, of the match. Gary is absolutely going to have to strike here and uh, to, to at least make, make Tim feel that uh, he's going to have to perform in the tenth. Gary Rebelo bowling in the ninth frame. 147 in the seventh, strike in the eighth, bowling in the ninth. There he is. Wow, that was a great pitch. Gentlemen, it's only three pins. Uh, Tim Elsass is up by three pins. Uh, question, Ronnie. Uh, Tim Elsass had the advantage here. He, had, he opted to finish on the right lane, but uh, don't you think sometimes that might put the pressure on you if you have to perform, put the pressure right on you? 
Well, that's the idea of it, uh, Jim. You know, uh, they've been here all weekend and they've seen it perform under the pressure. Uh, uh, now, now it's time. Uh, you got two guys on strikes. Uh, Tim Elsass can't lose it uh, if he strikes out. Well, that was a great shot right there. Looks like he made those adjustments. That was Gary Revelo bowling in the tenth frame. He's got 147 in the seventh with three strikes working. The best that Gary Revelo can get is two. 37. He cannot lock out Tim Elsass. Tim Elsass can finish with three strikes in the tenth for 240. But it does put the pressure on him. But wouldn't Timmy like to have those pins back he threw away now? He lost over a mark in pin count back in the uh, sixth and seventh frame. Gary come in a little high and the pins are bouncing around. He leaves a solid nine. That's going to give him a uh, 226. 226 with a conversion here. Uh, what does he need, uh, Ronnie? Looks like he needs a mark. He need no. He needs the first strike. He's shooting 220 right now. He needs the first strike in the tenth to win the match. So uh, we're going to see what. One. It's all up to Tim. Uh, you know, when when you come to this situation, you got nobody to blame but yourself. Uh, he either wins it or he loses it. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're right down here. Uh, he elected to finish the match. Gary Rebelo has completed his work. He finishes with 226. It's very simple. Tim Elsass strikes on this ball. He wins the game. If he doesn't strike, he loses. He stayed with it, boys. He got it out there. Oh, no way. No way. Boy, what a tough break. I mean, you cannot throw the ball any better. We saw Gary Rebelo leave one earlier in the game uh, on a double. But now, when everything uh, was on the line, Tim Elsass threw a great shot. He, he, you just can't throw it any better. It's one of the worst breaks in bowling. Uh, it's a good break for Gary, though. And now he's looking forward for the championship match. Well, I tell you, Ronnie, I, just what a great shot by Tim Elsass. Trying to win, trying to be the only the second person ever to repeat here at the Akron Open and the Smash 7, which, you know, Reb left one, too. But that was, the, that was a big, big shot there. And uh, it's irrelevant now, folks, uh, really. That... That took a lot of the air out of Timmy's, uh, Timmy's tank. Well, it's going to finish up. Gary Revelo is going to win our third match, 226. Timmy Elsass is going to shoot 219. That means that Gary Revelo will go into the finals against Kenny Conchos. Timmy will finish in the third position. He'll pick up a check for $800 as he strikes out his fill ball in the 10th frame, 219. And a very exciting, thrilling match. Gary Revelo, 226, Tim Elsass, 219, and we're going to be back with that championship match for the Akron Open right after this. Okay, here we go for the final match for the 1989 Akron Open, Kenny Conchos and Gary Revelo. These two players will be bowling for a grand total of $2,700. Gary Revelo leads off the match with a strike. He's glued in. It's just a matter of whether he carries or not, huh, Ronnie? It's an important shot, uh, Dick. You know, it's, it's nice to get off a good start in a, in a major game like this. Uh, uh, let's see what Kenny can do. Uh, he's going to have to make some good shots right off the bat. It'll be interesting. Kenny Conchos bowling on lane 22 on uh, here on Akron Open starting out. This is his first TV finals in the tournament and you want to see a fine style watch this guy throw the ball he's just perfect in every aspect of the game first frame wall shot you know guys he was doing that throughout the whole 18 games he comes in light and he gets that great wall shot great action he's got great leverage and he's uh, got a good shot for this house uh, if he gets the ball to the right he gets a good reaction because of his power and if he pulls the ball a little bit with the great uh, uh, swing that he has, uh, it just keep, puts the ball right back on line, Ronnie. He sure does, and uh, he's got enough power and enough lift on that ball to, to, to shoot lights out, and he did it all this week. Hopefully he can do it one more game, huh? Kenny Conchos, 31 years old from Brunswick, Ohio, comes up in the second frame, and he is perfect again. Two strikes. Strike in the first, strike in the seventh, and uh, when we start talking about Kenny Conchos' stats, it's like the uh, who's who's in bowling. He is a PBA regional champion and we'll talk more about uh, Kenny Conchos as the game progresses as Gary Rebelo now comes up on lane 22 in the second frame here in the Akron Open going for two in a row still keeping the right around that seventh board bad break on that one it was a bad break he threw that shot good he got good roll on the ball uh, 
And they're here now. We're going to see right away the strategy starts. Consus has got the double. Rebelo strike nine. Let's let's see how it turns out. We got to watch out for that uh, oil carry down here on lane 22. We've been playing now for over an hour, so the oil is carried down. But Gary compensates perfectly for it and converts the seven pin, which gives him a spare in the second. With the strike in the first, it gives him 20 in the first. Conchos will be bowling in the third. I think if anything, uh, Jimmy, uh, this game, uh, if, since the oil has carried down, it could favor Kenny Conjos a little bit. He's got a little bit more roll on the ball. He gets it wide, he can get the ball back. Whereas uh, Gary could have a little trouble driving through the pocket, and he could leave those 10 pins. Gary Rebelo, third frame. Comes up with a strike. Uh, Gary Rebelo at both the third frame. He's got a strike in the first. Nine spare in the second. Strike in the third, which gives him a 40 in the second frame. Kenny Concho's coming up in frame number three. He's perfect through two. Kenny Concho's from Brunswick, Ohio, 31 years of age, had a blistering 246 average for the 18 game tournament. A great stylist, great leverage, Kenny Concho's. And he carries a Wally Gator, uh, a thin shot, and I think it's safe to say that uh, we are going to now have a, a new. Uh, Akron Open champion this year, and he's going to be from out of town. Am I right, Ron? That is true this time, Dick. Uh, you're right. Oh, last year's champion, Dean Billings, uh, fell to cash this year. And in 1987, and the only two-time champion, Todd Agee, it was unable to perform here. So uh, those are just some of the past champions as we watch Kenny Conchos bowling on lane 21. The fourth frame, perfect through three. Again, using that wall shot to his advantage. He's got it going. Well, he, you know, this guy, 840 over for 18 games. I mean, he bowls superb yesterday and today. Uh, the last game today, he, come, fin he shoots 180-something. The, the uh, 17th game comes right back. The 18th game shoots 240-something. He starts out tonight with a four-bagger. He's looking awfully sharp. Gary Rebelo coming up on lane 22 here at Colonial Village Lane, working on a strike in the third. And he lays it right in the pocket. Right now, uh, Gary Rebelo is going off at a 2-0 pace, where Kenny Conchos right now is, is around 2-20. So uh, right now, Kenny put the pressure on early. But uh, in my opinion, uh, Kenny ain't going to let up. He, sure, he certainly is a gym. And, and it was important, that shot, for Gary to let uh, Kenny know that he's still in this match and that, that he wants this title, too. And uh, I think he's going to throw this strike also. Two fine veterans here for the title of the 1989 Akron Open. Gary Rubelo, frame number five, strike. That's strike in the third, strike in the fourth, strike in the fifth. He's got 70 in the third as we watch Kenny Conchos. 26, 300 games. 26. 26. Uh, that used to be my waist size. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, though. Kenny Conchos did have a 300 here in the qualifying round of the Akron Open. And he also had a 298 game, so uh, striking is no new thing to Kenny Conchos. Came up a little high, guys. That's oh, what a tough break there. You saw he got the ball out just a little bit too early. He didn't have the, uh, the speed to, to hold that ball off. It hooked early, went right to the nose, and he's got himself a, a split where he's just going to have to get two pins on the left and, and uh, just try to come back the next frame. Gary Revelo has the lead. It's the same as the last game when Timmy Elsass started out with striking. Then he comes up with the uh, the big split as Kenny gets two, hoping for a pin to bounce out. As uh, right now he's got an open in the fifth frame. He's got 115 in frame number five. You know what's interesting, Jim, is uh, the fact that the it seems that this year the right lane has been the lane that's uh, proved to be the one to bounce up and surprise everybody. Usually the left lane uh, is usually a little tougher. Uh, that's, what, that's the way it has been in the past, but obviously this is a new year, and uh, I think we've got a match, guys. Kenny Conchos, 31 years of age, from Brunswick, Ohio, bowling in frame number six. Right back in there with the strike. Kenny Conchos is, like we say, a PBA champion. He is uh, eight, uh, is 800 series. He's got 14, 800. I don't think we got... 14 800s between us, guys. Well, Ronnie probably has 10, <laughs> and you've got four, so that gives us 14. <laughs> Gary Rebelo coming up in frame number six, working on three in a row. Currently has the lead by five pins. Takes his time, keeps the ball right around that seventh or eighth board, just lays in the pocket. Gentlemen, he's lined up. 
Gary Rebelo, the vet. Unbelievable. Uh, he's putting the pressure on Kenny Conzo, so if he, if he gets this one, Kenny's going to have to feel like he's going to have to strike out. Gary seems to be wired in. But let's not forget, you know, he left a couple taps, and uh, anything can happen here. We've got five good frames left, and, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be close. I think it's still going to go down to the wire. Gary Rebelo bowling on the left lane, lane 21 here at Colonial Village Lane. Going for five strikes in a row. There he is. Well, you know, the guy he shoots 255 in the opening match against Tommy Johns. He comes back, shoots 259 against Kerry Barbaria in a victory. He shoots 226 against Tim Elsass. And you know, gentlemen, he only made a TV show by three pins. Incredible. You know, come right down to the 10th frame uh, of uh, the last six games today as we watch Kenny Consos on the right lane. Kenny Conchos, a PBA champion and an OTBA champion. Right back in there and uh, gets a bad break on that, Ronnie. Solid eight. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think Gary Rebelo is a living right. Uh, you came down to the 10th frame. Tim Elsass leaves a solid seven pin. All of a sudden, Kenny Conchos has to have it and he leaves a pack eight. Those are, those are two things that uh, the opponents have to leave for you to win. And Gary's taking full advantage of it. Ronnie, let's ask a question here. You know, in the past, uh, that number one seeded player in the Akron Open has had a lot of trouble winning. Uh, it's got to be tough uh, waiting an hour, watching your opponent uh, throw the games and then come over cold. It's tough to win from that number one seeded position, isn't it? It sure is, Jim. And uh, But the, the, the key is is that Kenny now, he has to, has to strike out. He can still shoot a good 245 game, and, and which means that Gary Revelo will have to throw another strike. But now is the time. Uh, if he has any hope of winning the Akron Open Championship and, and being a 1989 champ, he'll have to strike here. We well, he gave that one a little more room coming up in frame number eight. He strikes. As like Ronnie said, he's in a must-strike situation, and he came through. As we are getting ready to watch Gary Rubolo, we've only got three more frames to go here in the 1989 Akron Open at Colonial Village Lanes. I'm Jim Mitchell along with Ronnie Bell and Dickie Barker bringing you all the action as we watch this 42-year-old Canton, Ohio player. Strike in the first, spare in the second. Strikes in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh frames. Coming up to frame number eight. A solid strike in the eighth. Right now, gentlemen, he is going off at a 240 pace, and the best Kenny, uh, Kenny Conchos can do is 235. He's going to have to protect this lead somehow, but the best protection is to get a strike here. And, and I look for Gary to throw a good shot. Uh, he's loose right now. He's got to feel comfortable. Uh, boy, you just cannot say enough about how well he's bowled. And, uh, and I have to admit, I didn't make the right pick, gentlemen, to, uh, looking so far. So. Yeah, it's... Uh, Gary Rubolo is definitely wired in. Bowling in the ninth frame, working on six, going for number seven. There, that just about locks it up. Uh, uh, let's see, Kenny Conchos, the best he can do is what, 235? 245. 245. Uh, he can open in the tenth. So uh, this situation is very plain as we watch Kenny Conchos comes up on lane 22. Must strike situation. If he does not strike on this ball right now, he cannot win the tournament. Uses the wall to his advantage, and there's still hope for Kenny Conchos as he strikes up in the ninth frame. Well, looking back at that solid eight that he left in the uh, seventh frame, and you know he's got one really bad shot the whole game, and Reb doesn't have a bad shot, so that's how great these guys uh, have bowled all weekend. And Rebelo marching from the fifth position all the way through Buzz Song through these uh, four competitors, and Conchos has got to have this one. He got it. He's still applying the pressure. He's in the tenth frame. Kenny Conchos is 155 through the seventh with strikes in the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth. Again, if he does not strike on this ball, he cannot win the tournament. He's throwing a fine game. He just got that bad break back in the fifth frame. But let's watch Kenny Conchos on lane 21, the eleventh shot. Must strike to have any chance to win. Uh, week 10. Well, I think we got a new Akron Open champion, Gary Rebelo. Uh, uh, just what a what a fine uh, uh, show he put on for everybody here, and uh, he's got to be just so excited. It's just a uh, believe me, it's a privilege to win this tournament, and uh, Gary's got to be feeling on top of the world. Well, Kenny Conchos uh, led this tournament by uh, oh 120 some odd pins. As uh, nice round of applause, he shoots 234. 
Kenny Conchos will pick up a check for $1,000 as we prepare to watch our new 1989 champion, Gary Rubolo. He will receive a check for $1,700. Yeah, Kenny bowled a great tournament average, 246, but he's going to finish second tonight as Gary's just finishing out the 10th. He can finish out with 280. That will give him a phenomenal four-game series of 1,020. Well, it comes out to about uh, 255 average, Jim, and, and we knew it uh, at the beginning of the show. We said they were going to be high scoring, and sure enough, it was. And and you just, uh, you know, when you're in a final match like this, uh, it's hard to beat a 280 game. And uh, uh, Gary's just throwing the ball great. He's uh, just so relaxed. And there it is. He's putting on a little show right now. He's enjoying it, and he's well-deserved uh, marching all the way from fifth all the way through and uh, our new 1989 champion. Gary Rebelo from Canton, Ohio. Uh, rumor has it, Jim, that uh, Gary will be buying drinks in the lounge. It's just a rumor, but uh, he could break that perfect record. As we watch Gary Rebelo throw the final ball here in the 1989 Akron Open. And he comes in a little light. 278, our new champion for the 1989 Akron Open, Gary Rebelo. And now we are going to have Rick Davis make the award presentation, and we are going to stay right here. That's tournament director Rick Davis. He uh, will be making the award presentation to all of our finalists, and we're going to keep it right here as we go through it. As uh, Rick Davis, again, puts on a, a, fine, a fine tournament. He's currently... Uh, thanking all the people who made this a fine tournament, all the scorekeepers and, and all the volunteers who made this a great tournament. Yeah, he did a great job, and uh, the whole staff here, you know, that's what it takes, you know, it's a teamwork. Uh, Rick, uh, Rick knows his stuff, being uh, just winning current recently himself down in Canton, the Stark County Master Champion, as Tommy Johns gets his money. Fine champion in uh, Rick Davis is uh, Tommy Johns in that fifth position. He uh, receives a check for $500. As we now see Kerry Barbera, he's going to receive a check for $600 and finishing in that fourth position. Another fine tournament by our 1986 champion, Timmy Elstas, who qualified in that number two position with a 240 average. He finishes in the third position, picks up a check for $800. And it's like we say, it is difficult to win from that number one spot. And, and uh, Kenny bowled a great game. That's true. And here we are with Kenny Conchos. He's going to receive a check for $1,000. He bowled a great tournament. Averaged 246 for the 18 games, but came up a little short against our champion. Who knows what could have happened, Jim? You know, we go back two games ago. Uh, where Timmy Elsass, Timmy Elsass leaves a solid seven pin and it, and it lets Gary win and now he wins the championship. Uh, what a fine champion. We are our 1989 champion, Gary Arevalo. Yes, sir. So he definitely has the experience. So. That's going to about do it for uh, our 1989 telecast. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ronnie Bell and uh, Dickie Barger for uh, doing our telecast. Any last words? Uh, it was just a great, uh, a great tournament again, Jimmy, and looking forward to next year. It's always wor uh, great to work with you two guys, and uh, you add a lot of class to this show. Uh, thanks for taking, letting me tag along. I appreciate it. And that'll do it for our 1989 Akron Open. I'm Jim Mitchell along with Ronnie Bell and Dickie Barger. And we'll see you next year.